here with NCY store and we're here to showcase how to install a big board kit uh, pretty much upgrading a 150cc to a 171cc uh, pretty much with uh, NCY uh, cylinder head and you can actually interchange them so it doesn't have to be an NCY cylinder this is actually a Tata cylinder head with actually a ceramic piston so we're going to change it to a forged Tata piston as well we're going to also upgrade the cam uh, gear to an A12 cam gear and it's made by Koso so first thing we do is make sure we got all our tools. This is the tools that you'll need. You'll need a gauge, uh, 0.004 and 0.05, also a torque wrench. We're gonna do about five pound torque on the housing of the cylinder head. And we're also gonna do about uh, seven pounds on the studs itself that holds all the cylinder and cylinder head. And then we also need a, uh, you're gonna need a, a stripper. You know, uh, pliers. Also, we're going to need also a big uh, size one Phillips. Also, a thin flathead and narrow. And you're going to need an adjustable wrench because we're going to be actually tuning the arm uh, rockets. And we're also going to need a rare nine millimeter, which don't use much. Eight millimeters for the most of the common 90% majority of the bolts there. A 10 millimeters for the stud as well as a 12 millimeters as well. So those are the basic tools you need to get started here. And we're gonna go and get started. This is Michael from NCY store. And we're here at our shop right here. It's a speed shop. And that's all we specialize in is high performance scooter parts and tuning. So here we go. We're gonna go and get our eight millimeter socket to remove the housing. You can also use a Phillips for this one, but I find it easier just to go ahead and get the eight millimeter socket. And we're gonna go ahead and attach it to our socket wrench. I'm gonna try to go ahead and show it to you one hand here. Here we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove, you don't have to remove the stator for this setup. All this is gonna take, if once you get the engine off, this shouldn't take no more than probably, if you, once you get the hang of it, probably less than 15 minutes really uh, to be able to swamp out both cylinder heads, the cylinder itself, change out the piston rings, as well as uh, change out the piston's um, wrist pin. So here we go. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and remove the, the screws that are in here. Let me go ahead and get my socket here. You get a little bit more torque power to it. Okay, here we go. There we go. I'm going to show you actually every step in detail, uh, each part. So this video is going to actually show the actual time frame, um, how long each thing will take, each step. It's already been pre-loosened a little bit. So here we go. We have guests coming in here always at the shop, so we're always busy uh, dealing with a bunch of uh, speed issue performance. Here we go. Almost there, we gotta get all the housing off. So we got two on the sides. Again, keep in mind that these are like this size of screw here. So I wanna show you what kind of screws are needed. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we got two so far, and then two here next. And there should be two more on the other side. And that should actually pop everything off. We also need to take our intake manifold out, and that's going to take a 10 millimeter. Oh, oh there we go. So there's a 10 millimeter right here that we're going to also take out. But before we take it out, let's go ahead and finish all the screws that are the same size here. And most we're going to use again is all 8 millimeters. So here we go. Here's another one here. There we go, got that one out. This one is also an eight millimeter. Eight millimeter and five sixteenths are the same thing. So people tell you if it's five sixteen, it's the same as eight millimeter. 
Uh, ones is just saying it in standard, other ones are actually in matrix. So we're going to keep all R's in matrix as possible. That way you guys don't get confused by the numbers. Again, keep in mind that if you're working on a QMJ, uh, like this one here, this machine, engine here, you can see here, there's a J at the end, uh, QMJ, Q is pretty much stands for is the GY6 motor, and the J part stands that it's going to be a 150cc, that's how you can tell what size of a CC stock engine you have, if it's QMI, I pretty much just short, uh, again Q is for GY6 and I is going to be for it's going to be a 125 cc. Okay, so we're going to remove the hosing here for this one. And you can remove this if you want to, or you can keep it on there. If you want to remove it, just go ahead and twist it out here. That's what you got the pliers for. Makes everything easier. Okay. You can remove the hose completely, or you can just leave it. It doesn't really affect anything. Give it a good, and we'll set this aside. Keep your screws nice and neatly because you'll get back to them. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and before we can remove the entire housing, we have to remove that intake um, uh, manifold. There we go. So we're going to switch it up to a 10 millimeter back. There we go. This engine has been thoroughly cleaned out so that way you guys can see it without the oil residue, uh, the motor oil. And we're going to be using the same engine soon to showcase how to actually build it to a, a 180cc and that requires taking off the stator and changing out, uh, well we choose to actually, we're going to upgrade the stroker as well. But for this one we're just going to show you how to bolt on. Uh, the 150cc big bore kit that doesn't need to modify any of the um, boring. There we go, that one comes off. And don't forget to, uh, there you go, your gaskets. As well as you have a little one here, a little thicker uh, plastic piece that gives it a little bit more reach. Okay, so the housing is almost coming out. There's a snap right here, you can snap right off. Be careful with it, there it goes, see how it snaps. There we go, so snapping off, remove the top. There's interlocks here as well. So you wanna go and make sure we plow it. There you go, this is coming off quite nicely. Okay, we'll set it down on the floor. And then here we go, another piece here. So there's just two pieces pretty much in there, it is. it's exposed now, pretty much your cylinder. Also, if you haven't removed your, um, your spark plug yet, it takes a uh, 516, so I can remove it, I'll show you. There we go. There you go, 58, sorry. 58 for the socket, for your spark plug. I'm gonna get that removed right now. You definitely want to remove because you're gonna be turning it to top dead center. Um, and I'll show you just in a minute here how to see, uh, what, what it is is meaning that the piston will come up to the cylinder at the very tip point on the very top of it, flush right here. So this is part unit here is a cylinder head. This is the cylinder and this is the cylinder head cover. Okay, which you can't see yet until we expose. So let's go ahead and get back into our eight millimeter. Again, majority of the bolts you're gonna be dealing with, it's gonna be eight millimeters. So we're gonna go and switch it back to eight millimeters. There we go. There we go, 10 millimeters, 8 millimeters, sorry, it's coming off nicely. There we go.
that guy out today is that guy that was in earlier. He has now he has two. It's gonna so fly, he's gonna fly out soon, so on let me go ahead and uh, stabilize the camera real quick here. That way I can go and hold uh, the cylinder head. It's not heavy, but I just don't want it to fall on his own. There we go. That's it. Uh, we got one more screw. There's a total of four screws. There we go. Right now the screws are not that confusing because most of the engine screws, what we took out, we should put back in that we don't have to worry about misplacing them. So they're pretty much, most of them are the same size still. You can see here, and you can tell which one's the plastic uh, housing screws uh, with the metal. It, it has a Phillips indent inside of it. So that one we don't have to be concerned about. But one of these we do, and I believe one of them we can save them to put back in here. There we go. Let's put it back in here so we don't have to worry about. There we go. It's kind of free handed a little bit. Okay, well, I guess I'll stop by next week then. All right. I believe that screw goes. Yeah. Okay. That one has a little bit of stuff in there. It's interesting. Oh, I got gunk in there. Okay, we're going to leave that screw in there for we can remember it. Now it's time to go ahead and take out the cylinder head uh, cover. Here we go. There's it exposed. Now, what you want to do is have it uh, top dead center. So you can see here. It's almost a top dead center. So what you're gonna need to do is, if you don't have your shader open, you can actually see it from here as well. Um, let's see if there's enough sunlight here that we can actually see it. And there's a, a markings right here where you can see there's a T that tells you where it's at, and you can actually uh, turn it where it hits T. Again, T short for top dead center. And unfortunately, we, there's not enough light here to see it here. So we'll just go ahead and reference it from here. So there it is. We want this to to align, and there's going to be an open circle right here as well. So let's go ahead and just crank that over. Okay, here we go. We're going to use our kick kickstand here to crank it over. Okay, let me go ahead and put this down while I'm cranking it. You need both hands. See, see that how it's rotating? Okay, you definitely, there you go, almost. And while the spark plug is being removed, you can see it's spinning. So we're almost there at top dead center. As long as you make sure these two are live. I come from the side, you can see a little bit more better. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's it. That's your top dead center point. And that's where we can go ahead and adjust uh, everything else. So now we got that at top dead center. We're ready to go ahead and take everything else off. Okay, so the housing again, you want to keep all your screws aligned. I would recommend just putting them back into the slots. That's what I'm going to do with these ones. There should be only four of them. That eliminates our search for all our screws when we're going to put them back in. Makes it a little bit faster for us. There we go. There's one more. Okay, so we got that one in there, and now we're going to go ahead and uh, pretty much start taking off our lug nuts here, and these again take a 12 millimeter, so. Again, keep in mind lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, so we're turning clockwise, counterclockwise as loosing it, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. That's how I remember her how to always turn the threads correctly. There we go. One down, three to go. And you can put their washers very carefully too. There we go. The washers. There we go. 
We might even upgrade the rocker arm to a Tata rocker arm. Uh, might as well, we are already getting ready to upgrade the uh, cam gear as well. Excellent. Okay. The rocker arm has four screws holding it, and they're going to be torque specific. Uh, this is going to be torque back to about seven pounds, seven foot pounds. There we go. Okay, and the exhaust is EX, that only fits one way and it's facing the bottom because our exhaust vent is on the bottom and our uh, intake on the top, our air, air intake is on the top and our exhaust is located right on the bottom here. Let me see if I can swirl the camera for you. You see that? There's a little hole there. That's our exhaust. So EX stands for the exhaust. Okay, so now we got that there. We're gonna go ahead and take out the rocker arm. Coldly here. So we got the rocker arm off now, assembly. Now we're gonna go ahead and take out our cam gear. And we, first of all, we gotta take out the uh, uh, chain tensioner in order for us to even loosen the, the chain here for us to take out the cam gear. So here we go. What you wanna do now is use a number one Phillips. Uh, because if again, if you use something too tiny, it'll probably eat it up or strip it. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that uh, our component lasts a while. We're replacing uh, Taiwanese uh, components versus Chinese components, uh, but we still want to make sure that our existing components uh, stay long. So what you want to do is loosen this. There we go. The reason why you want to loosen this first uh, before you take out these two is because there's going to be pressure on this bolt. Because if you loosen these two ahead of time before removing the center Phillips, you're going to have to put this in a vise and try to get this center screw out. So uh, it's already loosened. We can actually just go ahead and now we can go ahead and use our uh, socket number eight again. Eight, eight millimeters. And we're going to go ahead and remove the, the tensioner. It's called the chain tensioner. It pretty much uh, rides on top of the chain guide, you'll see. There we go. You're seeing everything in real time, uh, how long it takes for me to take everything off. Keep in mind, these are pretty loosened already, so that's why I'm not having a, to struggle with if you think thinking that all these are going to be like easy to be loosened. It will take a little bit of time. There we go. It's coming off nicely. Let's see here. There we go. And there we go. And it's actually stayed uh, good. The tensioner is still uh, locked in securely. All right, uh, there we go. See how it rides on there? That's the chain guy belt. Okay, we're gonna go back here and take off. Now it's loose, you can see here. We're gonna go ahead and remove our camshaft. You can probably remove it from the bottom first or the lower first, whichever you can try to slip off. Try not to block the camera. There we go, it's coming off, there we go. And another trick is I heard that you can actually use a tie strap and to keep these in place so you don't have it slide back into the engine crankcase because uh, that'd be a little bit harder to fish out. So we're gonna go and get a tie strap here. Um, so that's one more probably uh, equipment you'll need is a tie strap, a simple tie strap. And just going to go and tie it. And it's also easier for you to pull things out and in as well. So there we go. We just made a little knot there, a little small tie strap. So that way we can hold our engine in place while we're pulling things out. Okay, I forgot to mention also there's dowel pins as well. A crankcase, it comes with uh, and uses the 8 or 10 millimeter uh, dowel, uh, uh, they call them dowel pins or guiding pins. And if you're gonna use it for any of these sides, they're not interchangeable. These ones for the CVT uh, cover, their dowel pins are about eight millimeters, which will cover CVT as well as stator um, next time. 
And so these ones use pretty much the biggest dowel pins you can think of. The length are the same, but the size of uh, the width and diameter, they are a little bit bigger. So these dowel pins are 10 millimeter dowel pins. So I just want to give you a heads up if you're going to order replacement dowel pins. You won't need to, uh, not with the bolt on the kit. There you go. We're taking our dowel pins. And they only can fit certain slots, so you don't have to worry too much. You can't force these dowel pins in here. What they do is they help align the cylinder head as well as everything other components to make sure they align. It's helpful, especially when you have um, your um, gasket and stuff. You'll see the gasket in a little bit here. I'm going to start pulling it out now. Okay. Uh, before we can start pulling it out, I've got, there's two more. I'm ahead of myself here. Uh, the screws are here. Takes another eight millimeter. So here we go. You can see me there. There we go. Let's take that out. Coming loose here. Lucky Lucy, righty tidy. And we might have to break this video in by two par because I'm not sure if we can upload the whole amount of time frame into our YouTube channel just yet. This will be the first YouTube channel of our series. Also bear with me because this is the first time I'm shooting a YouTube video tutorial or trying to. There we go. This is all loose already. Okay. So here we go. Now we can pull it out. You can see here it comes out. And just hold your chain steady. Uh, it's kind of nice again with the tie strap. And the first uh, gasket you'll have is a metal gasket. And it can only face a certain way to make it perfect. And you also have dowel pins as well. Okay. So this is pretty much what our cylinder head looks like, our stock one. It's not 61 millimeters. That's what we're going to aim for. So this is our cylinder head. We're going to go and replace it with our upgraded NCY cylinder head, 61 millimeter, uh, big bore. So we're going to go and uh, get that one open and disclose shortly. See the little light blue tent there? So that'll be coming up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove this gasket. We're gonna, this gasket is pretty durable. It's made from uh, sort of a thin flex metal. So we can reuse this one. Oh, actually we can't because we're upgrading to a bigger cylinder head. It comes with a bigger cylinder gasket. This one's a smaller one. So we're going to go and leave that aside. Okay, the next one we're going to remove. And you want to do this with this one. There's also another screw here in order to remove it entirely. There's a screw right here. People always miss out on that one as well, myself included. Here we go. Let me go ahead and get that in there. I have to use my other hand here. Okay. Lefty Lucy, righty tidy. Keep that in mind. Okay. Okay, let's see here. I pre loosened this for the demonstration so you guys wouldn't have to watch me fiddle through it, but. Uh, Go. What we'll do is it will make it shorter. We'll just use the, take off the extension, and uh, we'll just use our regular uh, wrench socket extension here. Uh, we get a smaller one. Well, actually, you know what? We could take this one. We can use a driver. Driver works just fine. Okay, we just gotta get that last. Screw to come out. I'll have it set here that way I can have both hands. It's much easier, of course, when you have both hands. Okay, it's almost coming out. I think it's almost there. Okay. There we go. Almost coming out there. You can see it coming.
right, there we go. It's out. And now we can go ahead and remove our cylinder head. Uh, keep in mind again, there's gonna be another gasket and that one's gonna be a paper gasket. So here we go. Let me go ahead and get this ready to be removed. 